Hi everyone, welcome to our conversation with Adele Locke from Mint. Adele, thanks for taking time out of your day. I know it's really valuable, but we appreciate your time. Um, I was wondering, would you be able to introduce yourself to our audience? Absolutely, Whitney. Thanks so much for having me along today. My name is Adele Locke. I'm the Director of Mint Lighting Design, and we're a really unique consultancy practice in that we actually specialise in lighting residential homes from the small, tiny, way the way up to the big and grand. So uh, within our practice, we focus very much on light and how it affects people and getting everyone away from those evil pancake down lights all through their ceilings and creating designs that are really interesting and dynamic for clients. Oh, fabulous. It's such an exciting process, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. It's the best obsession and passion to have in the world, in my humble opinion. So. Yeah, no, I love it. I'm right there with you. Fabulous. Yeah, I thought you might be. <laughs> so we've got a, a few questions for you that are based on lighting design. Is it okay if I... Yeah, fantastic. Go for it. So in this day and age, how can architects and designers light a house or a residential home without covering it in down lights? Yeah, it's, um, it seems to be a tricky one out in the marketplace. Um, we're seeing, we are seeing a big improvement in that area where people are using more interesting light in homes. But I think the key thing that designers and architects need to be paying attention to is they need to be thinking about light as actually a paintbrush in their toolkit for designing a home. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just make everything else beautiful, get all the right materials and all the beautiful colours in place, and then fill the ceiling with downlight so that you don't fall over. Light is that sort of that icing on top of the cake that makes the rest of the design really come together. Mm. So I think my advice to them would be to, to focus on what they want to see in the space and right. light that really interestingly. And, you know, and that will actually look after the rest of the room. It doesn't have to have lights everywhere to work beautifully. Oh. How, would you, how would you approach it? Yeah, very similar. Very yeah. similar. Gone are the days of just flooding a space. Um, there's so much more to it. And... You know, I really think that we are in an industry that um, it's the, the people pleasing business and, you know, everyone's put their hard earned cash into mm -hmm. a design, be the actual building uh, and time and effort. And I think it's really nice to do exactly as you said, put the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. and, um, it yes. can really make a difference, can't it? Yeah. It can. It, is, it really, really can. And I think it's, you know, you touched on something really important there. You know, people spend vast amounts of very hard earned money building houses mm. and it just breaks my heart to see something that is so beautifully executed and then ruined with that kind of swiss cheese look to the ceiling especially when someone's put like a beautiful tip the ceiling in or something like yes. that yeah. there's such a missed opportunity so i think yeah focusing on light as something that you can actually do really interesting things with and it doesn't have to come from the ceiling and all of a sudden they're like the options are just endless yeah, perfect. Um, when lighting a space, do you have any sort of key process that you begin with or how do you actually go about it? Yeah, so we actually have a really specific process here at Mint that I designed back when I started the business. Um, we call it Streamline Design. And the reason we developed this sort of specialised process for homes is because the, the full lighting design process is a little bit overwhelming for most homeowners and it includes a little bit too much sort of you know, detail and development when you're working with people that perhaps don't have much knowledge of light. Mm -hmm. So we have um, our own language, we have our own way of documenting our projects so that it's really clear and gives people all the information they need without actually kind of getting too stuck down in that nitty gritty. Um, Fabulous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we start all our projects the same, you know, we do a consultation with our clients. Um, mm -hmm. And if our clients are the designers of the project, you know, the interior designer or the architect, we always make sure that homeowner is in the room as well so that they can actually have a say of what their home is going to look and feel like when it's finished. Fantastic. I really like that idea because quite often it can be done separately and, um, you know, you need cohesion, don't you? Everybody needs to be on the same page and listen to. So, yeah, yeah. And I think so often, you know, when I talk to my clients, you might think they're building one sort of house and then you start talking to that person and you start learning what really matters to them, you know, and what the heroes are in their house. And it may not be the thing that you thought it was in the first instance. Mm. So that's a conversation and I always say to people, you know, do you tell me anything you like about anything in your home and I'm just going to see that as light, you know. Mm. And when I've seen the light that's going to work for those things that matter to you, that's what's going to go into the design. Perfect. Yeah, love it. Um, do you actually consider the lights you want to use in a project? when you're looking at lighting up a space or how do you go about that, the actual fittings? 
Yeah, so um, probably not in so much in the first instance, like in the first instance in that consultation, we're really focused on the type of light, like is it direct, is it indirect, is it a bit of both? Um, what's it trying to focus on in a room? What do we want to see? And how do we get that light there? So we want to know that it's going to be a spotlight with a narrow beam because it's a high ceiling or it's going to be a wall mounted light, <clears throat> pushing light up onto some beautiful architecture so the room feels really large and vibrant. Mm -hmm. We want to know those sort of things in the first instance. And then later we work out exactly what equipment is actually going to do that. And that is driven right. by the quality of it and the performance, but also by the client's budget. You know, not everyone's yes. got exactly. an budget. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, so we look at that, we sort of look at that further down the track. Once the light is right, then mm -hmm. we choose the machines. Fantastic. And do you find more of your clients are currently getting a little more creative? Yeah, people are giving us a lot of latitude. And I think some of that is down to the fact that we've got some really great example projects out there now where people can see what we can actually do with light when we get to be really, really daring. Um, yeah, and but you know, most of the people that call us up, um, most people are at this point of, I don't want down lights everywhere, but mm. I have absolutely no idea what my alternatives are. Exactly. So they know what they don't want. Yeah. And yeah. we work with them to work out what they do want. Fantastic. Um, speaking of projects, do you have any current projects you, you can share with us at the moment? Yeah, yeah. We've, um, we've got a heap up on our website at mintlighting.com.au, but I've pulled out a few here just so you can see how incredibly different light can actually be in a home, depending mm -hmm. on the style and the aesthetic of, of everyone involved. So uh, this first project that is going to come up in just a second, here we go. Um, this one was an amazing architectural design. So that hallway there is actually about five and a half metres high and about oh, 15 metres long. Stunning. Yeah, yeah. So when we first saw the project, you know, the, the clients already had lighting designs that have been done by others and it was, you know, down lights everywhere. Yeah. Um, and we looked at this and just saw such an opportunity to make the architecture actually come to life. Exactly. Rather than just splotching it full of light, you know? Yeah, that really speaks to you, doesn't it? And it's such an, uh, an incredible accent on an entrance to a home. And I think that's really important because yeah. it's leading in, um, you know, to the rest of the space, so. Yeah, yeah, it's that welcoming moment, right? And we see it in traditional homes where you have the pendant as the welcoming moment, and that totally yeah. works in some styles. But this, when you've gone, I mean, you can see the facade of the house, like there's some really interesting textures and architecture. Yeah. And making that the wow factor, I just think, yes. you know, that's, that's where light really works together with the rest of the mm -hmm. design team. Absolutely. And that really does give you the wow factor. It's stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Our clients joked with us when they first moved in that uh, when their friends came to visit, they said, um, I think they forgot to put the lights in. <laughs> because during the day, you can't even see that that light is there. You know, it's Absolutely. just a beautiful, beautiful space. So... So from that, we also work in homes that are, you know, a lot more traditional and we've, we've got this mm -hmm. kind of approach in Melbourne where we have our older style home at the front. We knock off the back lean to and we put, you know, the amazing yes. new modern building out the back. Um, mm -hmm. And this was a project like that. Um, but these old, old homes, they have such amazing textures in them, you know, yes. which again, they kind of get lost, right? If it's just mm -hmm. down lines. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll look at the hallway again. You know, we, we put light up onto the ceiling and we created strategically light and shade so that it wasn't just a really consistent kind of hallway. It mm -hmm. felt like you were moving into the home, you know, in a really natural way coming through that hall. Absolutely. It's almost like a natural progression. And I love the accent on the brickwork there. Yeah, thank you. I, um, I have a bit of a thing for bricks. You can see it in my studio space behind yes. me. So this yeah. is our little workshop area. And, you know, old bricks lit with grazing light are absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Absolutely. Like, flatten it off with boring light and they just look terrible. Really, it doesn't matter how well you've done it. It's just going to look awful. So, yeah, that grazing light is one of my favourite, favourite things to do when we've got something really interesting to work with. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? I'm, I'm loving the wall lighting too, the washing effect in that family area um, yeah. up onto the, the panelled ceiling. That's another great effect. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's one that really kind of leaves people a little bit unsure when we first start introducing it, when they've only ever seen light from the ceiling before. Yes. Um, but, you know, that, that room is amazingly bright and well lit when those lights are at full power. Mm. Um, and it was, you know, I mean, we love up lighting at Mint anyway, but Absolutely. in that particular instance, we couldn't go through the ceiling even if we wanted to because it was a really sustainable design. And right, you okay. Put 
anything through that material. Yeah. So even if you'd wanted to, you couldn't, which meant that we had to use our walls to fill yeah, that space exactly. with light. Well, what a fantastic way to accent that feature though. Um, yeah. I find you're right, a lot of clients really don't consider wall lights or washing at all, that sort of effect. Mm. Um, so mm. used to um, a single pendant or down lights or something, and yeah. to have the confidence in you to help them al along with that decision making, and then to see that effect, it's mm. really fabulous. Yeah, it makes you feel good. Cool. I get so excited every time we see photos of any of our projects, you know, it just kind of fills me up, fills the rest of the team up too, you know, even if it's just someone with their mobile phone, we just Absolutely. love seeing what the light looks like. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. what keeps us going too. Yeah, it keeps you really motivated, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, especially when someone calls up and says, you know what, the whole house is wonderful, but I love my light, and you just think, yeah, yeah nailed it, so. Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and actually this home here is a really great example of that, because oh. these guys were really interesting. They, um, they didn't increase the size of their home at all in the renovation. Right. So they rebuilt the rear end of the home as, a, as an open plan living. You know how usually you sort of gobble up the backyard? Yes. These guys really cared about having those outdoor spaces. You know, the, that front yard is their productive garden. The back garden's got this amazing creek running through it, like I want to live there, right? Wow. <laughs> and so it was really key in meeting them that they wanted to feel the outside, inside, and the inside, outside, and, and have it all connected. So you can see, you know, we've chosen locally designed pendants for the hallway that are massive leaves so that we're creating that texture of, of, of trees um, but also bringing in those really earthy elements. Um, and then we actually designed the pendant over the dining table Beautiful. to bring really functional light. You know, we've got a heap of light going up, lots of light going down. Mm -hmm. But we also designed it to be a suspended planter in that rear space so that they can grow plants over all year round and actually eat under greenery every night with their family. And these guys Absolutely. adore their light. Spectacular. That is just such a superb way to make it flow. And so creative. I love the idea of that planter. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it just works. You know, the, the timber and everything, it's not over the top. It just complements it beautifully. Mm. As you said, it's brought the space inside, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And interesting, that timber was actually reclaimed timber. So it was all reclaimed hardwood. I had an absolute ton, but the Bet. effect, yeah. amazing. And we actually had a stand up fight in that project about putting extra downlights through that lovely timber ceiling. Wow. There were those involved in the project that didn't believe that our lighting design could get it there. Mm -hmm. um, happily, of course, we won the argument and just put in the lights that were designed. And so we end up with this really elegant, elegant space. And of course, they more light than they could uh, ever hope to need. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's about overcoming the objections and sort of assisting through that process. Mm. And, you know, in the end, they've given you every confidence and look what you've achieved. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's always good when we get to lead the way with light. Mm. And we do approach it differently and we know that. Yeah. Um, but just because it's different doesn't mean that it's not right, you know? Sure. Yeah. So here was a, a, another project of ours where, again, you know, you start seeing a theme in our work, you know, the, the light is hidden in the architecture and there's, there is light actually directly over the dining table in that image, mm -hmm. but it's hidden amongst those black beams. So the light isn't supposed to be the feature object, it's supposed to be making what's around it look beautiful. beautiful. You know, unless we've gone for the wow factor, you can see a little sneak peek of some of the pendants that are hanging in the void um, yes. that connects the front to the rear of the home. And yeah beautiful pendants are always going to sing in a design. Um, but when they're surrounded by beautiful architectural light, I think they actually come to life even more. They do, don't they? Yeah, mm. that's, yes, yeah, stunning. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful work. And exterior lighting too, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we like to get out in the garden. We, uh, we work collaboratively with the landscape um, designers, often in that sort of situation. But mm -hmm. sometimes clients aren't going full landscaping. They're just looking for a, a little bit of... of pizzazz out in the garden. Great. But I especially like that, um, that side path lighting. You know, you can see we've actually hidden light for the length of that planter. Perfect. Yeah. So it looks beautiful outside, but inside it actually becomes a feature that runs alongside the fireplace, you know? So when you're sitting inside at night, you've actually got that light on outside. So it makes your room feel another, you know, meter or two bigger by having exactly. that light on outside. Oh, fabulous. 
Yeah. It's great, isn't it? I often think too with exterior lighting, less is best. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. We, we did a, an event with um, uh, Leanne from Hunza, one of the, the major mm -hmm. uh, suppliers out of New Zealand last year. And she said exactly that. She said, you know, when you're talking about a garden, you need the smallest amount of light to make it look beautiful. You mm. really don't want a floodlit garden. You want yeah. those lovely little features and details. Great. Yeah, that's a stunning example. Mm. Thank you. So, yeah, so that's a few of our projects. Just to, I, help, I think it helps give context that you can have lovely big clean ceilings and still really bright, inviting places to live. Fantastic. Um, working with your clients, what stage of the project do they generally engage a lighting designer? Uh, well, most people a little bit too late in our opinion. Um, you know, it would be nice to come in really early so that we can integrate with architecture. But most people come to us when they've got, you know, they've, they've kind of resolved their floor plan, they're not planning to change it too much more, sure. and they have at least an idea of their, their joinery. Mm -hmm. But usually the finer details haven't been resolved yet. So sure. we do the concept at that stage. And then we, you know, we develop the design as the project develops um, and, and pull it together that way. But yeah, so it's basically as soon as there's plans and ideally well before you've actually um, engaged your builder and yeah, started pulling cable and all those sorts of things. Exactly. And, then, and then the sky's the limit. Yeah, fantastic. Look, I just love that you're so passionate about lighting. Um, you know, and your work's a testament, it's just absolutely fabulous. Um, so, look, thank you so much for your time today, Adele. Um, we're just wondering if anyone in the audience wanted to reach out to you, where can they find you? Yeah, look, um, head straight to our website, mintlighting.com.au, or chase us down on Insta. We're on there every day. We're always having conversations with everyone. So we share a lot of our knowledge and experience on our Insta feed, not just pretty pictures, so they can find us there and learn a little bit more about light. Superb. Well, look, thanks for joining our conversation today. Um, we hope you've enjoyed everybody out there in our audience and uh, continue to enjoy the About Space experience. Thanks so much.